Good morning and welcome to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I am located at 1563 Main Street in Peckville, Pennsylvania. And I'm right here with you each and every week at this time on this station to bring you, the landowner, the information you need regarding natural gas development. And I'll tell you, you know, regardless of my energy level, when I come in to do the show, regardless of it, it picks up when I say this. I, Doug Clark, have never, have not, do not, and will not represent gas or pipeline companies. I never have, and I never will. I represent the Pennsylvania landowner, oil and gas right owner, for such items as reviews and consultations. I talk about them all the time because they have proven to be one of the best services. Now, I'm a little biased, but I think all the services that, that we provide and I provide are very valuable or else we wouldn't do it. But the reviews and consultations have been such a, an amazing tool to help to educate and inform people across Pennsylvania with property and gas rights across Pennsylvania and people located literally all over the country and in different parts of the world. If you listen to the show, you hear me talk about reviews and consultations so many times. And I know sometimes it may sound commercial. But if you listen to the show, you know, I hope, that my ultimate goal of the show is to get people thinking, to get you information, to identify hot issues, to identify loopholes, to talk about mistakes that people are making in signing agreements, to try to prevent those mistakes from being repeated. And you'll hear me talk from time to time. You know, I grew up in Armstrong County in western Pennsylvania. I'm now located in northeastern Pennsylvania. So in growing up in western Pennsylvania, I grew up on the airport road. My parents still live in the house that I grew up in. My grandparents had a farm. My dad now does the farming on the small farm. My sister lives in the farmhouse. And it is beyond a joy for me to represent people like my parents, like my parents' friends, like my aunts and uncles, like my great aunts and uncles. It's an absolute joy. But growing up you know, on the airport road in rural Pennsylvania, we didn't have, and my parents didn't have, uh, much contact, and I, I mean not much at all, with any attorneys. We didn't know any attorneys. I never knew an attorney growing up. And that's just the way it was. And I had always, you know, from a little kid, I wanted to go to school. I wanted to go to college. I wanted to be a lawyer. And, you know, thankfully I was able to do that and didn't know, you know, you don't know what you want to do when you're younger as far as I thought I wanted to be a lawyer. But, you know, what do I know when I'm 10 years old, 12 years old? But it ended up that you know, I was lucky and it's something that I love to do. And I was so fortunate to find this area of the law. You know, I certainly never said, oh, yeah, I want to grow up and be an oil and gas attorney. Never in a million years would that ever cross my mind. But it has been this amazing journey that has brought me to represent people in oil and gas matters. And again, people like my parents and all the people around the areas where I've grown up. So this has been an incredible gift. And I know in growing up in rural Pennsylvania where I did, I know I heard the jokes about lawyers and I know that there was a certain, you know, attitude about lawyers and hiring a lawyer and it's just not what people did where I grew up. Just wasn't what happened. We didn't have contracts that we needed lawyers for and we had oil and gas contracts. There is a, a vertical well, a shallow, a conventional vertical well on the farm right now providing free gas to the farmhouse. So we knew of this, but again, there was no negotiation of these contracts. You got a dollar an acre. If you got $5 an acre, that was great. But really, you were wanting free gas to your residents. That's the same, and that's all across my area and all across western Pennsylvania and southwestern Pennsylvania especially. You'll see that. You see that a lot. 
So there was no need for attorneys when you're dealing with those types of contracts. And the other contracts, like I talk about a lot, you know, this hay, uh, selling hay bales out of the field or in the barn, and we shook hands. You know, that's how contracts were made. You shook hands and you said, okay, see you then. This is our deal. And you know what? Nobody breached those contracts. People lived up to those contracts. But those contracts were made amongst people in the community. You didn't contract with Exxon or Chevron or Shell or Chesapeake and on and on and on to come pick hay bales out of your field. You didn't do that. Nor did the person seeking to buy hay bales out of your field come to you or in the barn and come to you with a written contract with all kinds of terms as to what this transaction was going to be and in the event that there was an issue with the transaction, how would it be remedied? Nothing like that. Nothing like that. But today, people in my area, and I, I have the privilege, I have multiple clients right now in Armstrong County, which is awesome. I love that. I love it. I love it. I love it. I have represented people on the airport road where I grew up that I never knew as a child or ever heard the name before, which again, is just this incredible gift. So one of the things that I understand is the hesitation for somebody to say, well, you know, why do I need a lawyer? Lawyer's going to cost me some money. Why do this? Then, okay, let me back up. So that I understand that completely, completely. I could even have been a child and heard those types of conversations if various matters. And most people would not go to a lawyer. Again, I don't even know anyone that had a lawyer when I was a kid. So I understand the hesitation to contact a lawyer. And then, you know, again, look, and then none of them offend me because, you know, I, I'm a lawyer, but I don't consider myself a lawyer that would be offended by any of these jokes because I know what I do. So you know, I hear the jokes of the lawyers. You hear, oh, lawyers are expensive. Oh, they're crooks. They want to take your money. Look, you know, I'd like to think that nobody is, but there's probably some bad, well, <laughs> let me say it this way. There's bad lawyers out there. No doubt about it. There's bad everything out there, bad everything, bad school teachers, bad police officers, bad lawyers, bad doctors. There's bad everything out there, but there's also good and there's good lawyers who are there to help you. And I certainly, certainly, and I take, I will not hesitate to this at all. And I take great pride in saying that I feel that I know that I'm a good lawyer and I know that I'm a good lawyer who cares about my clients because I know what I feel like every night when I go to bed. I know what I'm thinking about at three in the morning when I wake up. And I know that my, and I get great joy when I'm able to help people. It's a wonderful, wonderful job. And I really like it. I, well, I really love it. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. So I understand. My point here is, is I completely understand the hesitation for people to contact a lawyer. Then you see a contract and you see, oh, well, there's a lot of money involved. And, you know, hey, why do I need a lawyer? I'm already going to get this amount of money. Why do I need a lawyer? I'm already getting these documents. Uh, this looks good to me. What do I need a lawyer for? They're just going to take money. Well, I'm going to tell you that my, you know, that's just... Maybe it's true in some cases, but sure as heck isn't true with me. And on top of that, you throw in the land man. And guys, these guys know the mentality also. And when I say mentality, this is the mentality of my parents. It's the mentality of everybody I grew up around. They're, okay, well, what do you need a lawyer for? And very hesitant to get a lawyer. Then you have the land man saying, whoa, why do you need to get a lawyer? You don't need to get a lawyer. The company has great lawyers and they have written these documents with everything you need. Well, first off, again, that's insane. But there's this then, you know, kind of like, well, you don't need a lawyer. Just you're promoting and adding to that feeling of, okay, well, why do I need a lawyer? So they don't want you to go to a lawyer. Listen, newsflash. The companies and the landmen generally do not want you to go to a lawyer. And the reason is they don't want you to know your leverage. They don't want you to know your rights. 
They don't want you to understand that you can maybe negotiate this document for tens of thousands and literally at times hundreds and hundreds of thousands of more dollars. They don't want you to know that. This is true. This is true. They do not want you to know your leverage and they don't want you to know that maybe you can change this document, edit it, amend it to reduce rights, to guarantee future payments, or they don't want you to know that you can just simply say no to this agreement. Little side note, this is true. I met with people this past week, brought me a document, and it had a certain per acre bonus for this document. The people tell me that the landman, landman told them, wow, I have not seen an agreement like this. And I'll tell you, it was a no surface use agreement, meaning the company couldn't touch the surface of the property under this lease. The landman said, I have never seen this company offer such a high per acre bonus for a no surface lease. I've never seen this. They tell me that and in my cabinet, in my filing cabinet, sitting right by my left knee at my desk are multiple files with people with the same company, same company where the per acre bonus is higher than what these people are offered with no surface. And in fact, <laughs> in one case, the offer is almost double. So the company wants you to be in a vacuum. They want you, when I say vacuum, what I mean is they want you to be interacting with their land man. They want that to be your sole source of information. They want to keep you in that bubble with the land man. So when the land man says to you, they have never paid this much money. This is amazing. You're going to believe it. That's the idea. If you don't know, if you don't talk to Doug Clark, who tells you, hey guys, I have somebody who has literally double what you're offered with the same type of agreement. And so when this person tells you, I have never seen this type of offer before, and no disrespect for blind people, but this person is either blind or not telling the truth. One of the two. And let me tell you, newsflash again, it is not a crime to lie to a landowner in oil and gas lease negotiations. It is not a crime. It is not a crime. It is not a crime to mislead. It is not a crime. And I say this again, people can say anything. It doesn't make it true. They can say anything. It doesn't make it true. So again, you know, look, I wasn't part of this conversation, but I believe it, you know, and I believe it. I, maybe it didn't happen, but you're out there. You hear these conversations. You're a part of these conversations. And when the landman says, well, this is the most we'll pay. I've never seen this much money paid. Well, if it's just you and that landman interacting and you don't know, you're not talking to a bunch of other people around you. Or maybe you're talking to your neighbors, but you're not talking to some people up the road. And you're not talking to somebody like me, who has probably, in almost all of these cases, negotiated and represented other landowners in your region, or very close to you, in these types of oil and gas lease or pipeline agreements or other negotiations. And I say that regardless of your location. I have represented, as you know, clients all across northern Pennsylvania, all across the western part of Pennsylvania, the southwestern part, and then even coming to the east in the southern part of the state. 
So when somebody says, oh, this is all we ever paid, and I get these emails, it cracks me up. I get these emails. I, I got one right here. I get these emails talking about, uh, you know, this is, uh, we pay this amount of money, and it says we've leased hundreds of acres of land uh, for this same percentage and royalty by your client or by this person. Well, <laughs> yeah, that may be true, but that doesn't mean that's the most you paid. And I'll tell you one thing, it doesn't mean that's what my client's going to sign for. And just because you've leased hundreds of acres of people, no offense, who would sign anything, doesn't mean that people are going to take the effort and going to actually work and address and become educated are going to have to sign the same deal. It's not going to happen. So, circling back some, my point is, is I understand the mentality of having concern or hesitation to call an attorney. And part of the reason I do this show is I want people, potential clients, people who are thinking that maybe they want to talk to an attorney to get to know me. You know, who you hear in the show is who I am. So I want you to get to know me and say, you know what? Hopefully you'll say, hey, this guy seems like he cares. He seems like he cares for people like me. And he seems like if I'd hire him, he would represent me and do the best he can. I really hope as my goal is to, well, my goal is to get information, but I want to help everybody who I can. So I really hope it comes through because I want you to not have the mentality of my parents and the people around where I grew up. Like, oh, the attorney's going to try to take advantage of you. They're going to try to just take money and get a part. I don't charge percentages of these things. I do work hourly. So I want to overcome that. You say, you know what? This guy seems like a good guy. And I'm going to tell you, I do. I, and I don't have a hesitation in this either. I, I think I'm a good guy because I know what's in my heart and I know what I do. So when I talk about the reviews and consultations, first and foremost, they are time and time again, an incredible value. And I have not had anybody at the conclusion of a review and consultation in office or telephone conference call say, boy, why did I do that? What was that for? Well, that was a waste of time. No, routinely. Wow. I'm so glad we did this. This was such great information. Thank you so much. I so appreciate this. Wow, my head's spinning. This is great. I I'm so excited to get this information. Those are the types of responses that I routinely get. And I'm not making that up. I, I don't make any of this stuff up. Those are the type of responses that I typically get. So I talk about these reviews and consultations so much because it's two part. One, I know that I can give you the information you need to decide how to go forward. I do it all the time. I know that when I do this, and most we do by phone, but we do them in office all the time as well, I know that generally in two hours or less, I can review your documents in almost all cases. I can review your documents and we can also have our phone call or in-office meeting and I can answer all of your questions. I can address your leverage, your rights, negotiation strategy, regardless of the type of document. I can identify loopholes. I can explain calculation of royalty. I can do all of those things. And you're going to hear it from somebody who truly has their own go only goal of helping you, not trying to get you to sign something. <laughs> you know, that's not it. Now, most of my clients end up signing contracts, but they end up signing a lot better contracts than what they're presented. But the goal is, is to get you this information. And sometimes people say, wow, great. Listen, I didn't know I couldn't, I didn't have to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and bypass this pipeline agreement. So I talk about reviews and consultations so much, again, because they're so valuable and the feedback has been outstanding, but also I recognize a hesitation with people to contact an attorney. What am I getting into? How much is this going to cost me? Oh, they're going to, you know, he's just, or she's just going to take advantage and just try to get some of my money. No, that's why. That's the second reason I like to talk about these and I really like to promote it because we can do a review and consultation 
and again, it's usually an hour or two, then from there, if you're not happy and you don't want additional representation, then hey, we end it. You don't have to go any further. Many times after that review and consultation, people say, hey, I want you to negotiate for me. I want you to do this other work. But you don't have to. You don't have to at all. So the worst thing that can happen is you spend about two hours of time and you have a legal fee for about two hours. Again, if it's two-hour work, it's, that's what your fee is. You have that. And you get information from somebody who's been doing this day in and day out for years now and whose only goal is to help you. So I will encourage everybody again as I will continue, regardless of your location, regardless of the type of agreement, but if you have a gas lease, if you're in Tioga and you have a gas lease, Rockdale, Repsol, Southwestern, EQT, JKLM, Sweppy, if you're in Susquehanna and you have Cabot, Southwestern, Chief, and Chesapeake and Bradford and all the all my friends in Western PA, regardless of the company, call my office, learn about reviews and consultations, and if you don't want to go and do one, don't do one, but call because I think that we're different. I certainly think I know that we are and I am way different than any negative stereotype you may have in your mind about attorneys. I want to help you. And if you want to test that and you want to get good information and you want to understand and have your questions answered, call and learn about reviews and consultations. And then if you want to have additional representation, I'm here and I want to help you. And if you don't, that's okay too. You will never hear me pressure you. I don't pressure people. I don't. I want to help you. So give us a call. Learn about reviews and consultations regardless of your location. 570-307-0708. Five seven zero three zero seven zero seven zero two, and keep listening each and every week to me, Attorney Doug Clark, from the Clark Law Firm. At this time, on this station, I'll be right back. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Make sure you join me each and every week at this time for All Things Marcellus, and again, give us a call whether it's reviews and consultations, to negotiate a contract. If you're thinking about buying or selling gas rights, especially selling, any pipeline agreement, roadway agreement, storage agreement, workspace agreement, these agreements are routinely negotiated for more money and much better language. Again, I talk about the reviews, the reviews, we identify, hey, look, these are other terms that I can typically get from this company. These are terms that I can't get from this company. These are the types of compensation rates we're seeing in this company. You know, I talked to um, somebody this week and they said that they were, they had talked to an attorney and the attorney said, well, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll have to find out what the going rate is in this, this area. Well, <laughs> um, that would be scary because if you don't have a good grasp and you haven't done any leases in this area in a while, that would make me concerned. You know, this, the leasing, not just leasing, the oil and gas work, the days of either landowners and lawyers going on the internet and printing off addendum terms, I'm telling you are gone. You need to have an idea and understanding about the development aspects and you need to, and this is where there is such an amazing resource of value, you need to understand where the loopholes are written in these leases and pipeline agreements and other oil and gas agreements. You need to understand where they are. You need to identify them. And one of the ways that we identify them is by experience, meaning somebody may call Say, I had this type of contract, or I have this contract, and the company is doing certain activity. And then they send me the contract, and I review it, and we do a review and consultation to determine whether this can occur. 
And then as we re review it, we may identify, well, here's the part of the contract that would allow this activity, or, hey, here's the part of the contract that I don't believe allows this activity, and here's what your options are going forward. But the key is, as you do these, and as you see how companies operate, you, being me, also acquire information and education. And the more you do this, you start to see these circumstances repeat. And you start to identify, here's how companies are seeking to take advantage of certain parts of these agreements. And I am going to tell you, they are very complex. They are very, very complex. The company doesn't want you in the weeds. They want you in the helicopter. They want you to be thinking about $1,500 and 15% and we're going to make you rich. And look, this addendum says cost-free royalty, royalty without deduction. That's what they want you to look at. Oh, we're going to develop it. We plan on drilling. We're a driller. We're going to drill. We're going to make you rich. You're in, those are the helicopter issues. They want you in the helicopter. We need you on the ground. We need you to understand what are the surface rights. We need you to understand that I have routinely represented people with well pads and access roads over 20 acres in size. Routinely. Routinely. Not just once. Routinely. You need to understand that. You need to understand the pipeline rights you're giving up. You need to understand how you might be able to minimize those rights to give yourself future opportunities to negotiate. And that has happened many times. And by minimizing pipeline rights and lease agreements, I've represented clients who have subsequently made hundreds of thousands of dollars in pipeline right-of-way agreements because we did the work up front in the gas lease. Or maybe I wasn't involved in the gas lease in any way. And the client comes and they say, hey, I want to do a review and consultation. I have this pipeline right-of-way agreement. We get on the phone and say, hey, look, the company, and we'll say in this case, doesn't have the right to do this. And so here's what your options are and here's what your abilities are to negotiate. So we address that and you understand and you have your leverage assessed. Again, on the ground, not in the helicopter, just focusing on the big shiny objects of bonus, royalty percentage, and not getting involved into the weed issues, the ones that actually really matter, how your royalties are going to be calculated. And that relates back to, again, the loopholes in the agreement. When you see things, and oops, <laughs> this, get fired up. This is one of the things that happens, okay? This happens all the time. The landowner, back to the beginning part about why do I need a lawyer? Here's what happens. The company gives the land man the tool of a provision in, a, in an addendum that they take to you. And they label that provision uh, royalty without deductions, cost-free royalty, something like that. They give the land man that tool, that arrow in their quiver when they walk out to the landowner and say, we're going to give you 15, 16, 17, 50, 2,000 an acre. We're going to give you 15%. And we're going to give you, look, royalty without deduction, cost-free royalty. Now, that landowner who was hesitant to talk to an attorney anyway, oh, wait, then the landman says, hey, we're giving you all this stuff Mr. Smith signed. He had an attorney, and this is what they did. There's no reason for you to go to an attorney. Well, <laughs> there is. There is. Because in most of these cases, in my opinion, uh, this cost-free, royalty without deductions, they're not what you think. They're just not what you think. And when we talk about loopholes, this is the loophole, I mean, <laughs> the loophole that you could dump an ocean into. This is a loophole that you could dump a mountain into. That's how big these loopholes are. But you're not seeing it because you're in the helicopter being told 1,500, 15%, 2,000, 15%, no deductions. Why need a lawyer? Mr. Jones signed this. Mr. Smith signed this. They had lawyers. Well, maybe their lawyers really stunk. 
You know, maybe they did. And maybe their lawyers don't understand. Maybe their lawyers have never studied discovery from uh, pipeline mar- or from pipeline transportation costs and marketing. Maybe they've never been involved in a royalty dispute uh, lawsuit. Maybe they have no idea what this loophole is. So they're in a helicopter with you. You need to understand these issues. And I'm going to tell you, as I sit here today, doing this show today, there are two companies that I regularly do lease negotiations with who, in my opinion, present people leases which they purport to be no deduction leases. In my opinion, they are not no deduction leases. Two companies that I regularly deal with, two companies I regularly deal with, and as of this moment, in the last year or so, I have been able to negotiate the royalty addendum language to create what I consider an actual no deduction royalty lease. And that's the type of information we talk about in reviews and consultations and how we do it and what language you want and what language we need. I'll guarantee you this, the companies are not going to be telling you that. They're not going to be telling you, well, this doesn't really mean what you think it means, um, but we might change it if you ask, but you have to ask the right way and you have to present the right language. No, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So you do reviews and consultations. You find out what do you have? Can it change? Has this company changed? And if they do change it, how can we change it? And that's just one area. It's an enormous area, but it's one area. And then there's many, 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 many other areas. And we're negoti- I negotiate leases all the time, and we are getting nice gains. Sometimes money, sometimes we can improve the money. Sometimes we can. Sometimes we improve it a lot. But the language, the royalty calculation, the types of rights you're providing in almost all cases. Now, I can't say we're changing the royalty in every case, but in almost all cases, we're making improvements and many times significant improvements to the lease. And if I can't improve the lease or I don't think I can improve the lease, when we have that conversation, we have our reviews and consultations, I'm going to tell you, as with every one of my clients, I am going to honestly tell you what I think we might be able to do or you can do. And I'm going to tell you, if I don't think that I can help you, I'm going to tell you, I don't think I can help you. I am not in the business of generating work that's not going to benefit my client. I don't do that. I don't do that. I work on matters that are going to benefit my client. And if I feel that we've hit the point, I call it the diminishing return, where you're going to be paying me money, but you're not going to get a return that justifies paying that money, we have that conversation. We have that conversation. Go to my websites, look at the testimonials, and see what the clients say. And I say this again because I want to encourage people, give us a call and see if we can help you. And I say it not as a guy sitting here like, oh my heavens, I need a client. We're unbelievably blessed. But I can take more clients. I can take more clients. I want to help you. And I want you to feel comfortable to call and understand that I'm not here to take advantage of you. I'm here to help you. And I really think I can. And the least that I can do, in my opinion, the least that I can do is a review and consultation to at least the bare bones that you understand what you have. Your questions are answered by somebody who's doing this for you. Somebody giving you honest information that you need to know. And then if you can't be helped further, if there's nothing I can do further, I will tell you that. If I think I can help you further, I can tell you that too, but you don't have to go any further and you will never be pressured. Never, ever be pressured. So that's why, again, I talk about these because I understand the people around where I grew up, my parents, they probably wouldn't be calling a lawyer naturally. And so we need to change that mentality that And I think that these reviews and consultations are a great way because, again, I stress they usually take two hours or less. No one's trying to take advantage of you here. We want to help you. So I want to help you. So if it's a pipeline agreement, 
a, a gas lease, any agreement at all, any document, give us a call. And look, if you don't like what you hear about the service and you get that information, that's okay. Then you don't have to do it. You know, you're again, you're not getting pressured, but we help people all the time. I help people all the time. And I'm very proud of that. And I know that there are many more people that I could help that aren't calling. Maybe they've never heard the show. They don't know who we are. Don't know who I am. Maybe they're afraid to call. Maybe they think it'll be too much money, you know, whatever that case may be. And that's who I'm talking to you. Don't be who I'm trying to talk to. Don't be afraid. Give us a call. See if I can help you. I want to help you. I want to make sure every single person in Pennsylvania is signing the best possible agreement. And many times that starts with a review and consultation. So I really encourage you again, give me a call 570-307-0702. 570-307-0702. I do all the reviews and consultations myself. I do all the representation myself. You're always welcome to come in. We can do them on the phone. We can do them with people in different locations, but get that review and consultation, at least to start and then decide if you want to do anything else. And again, there's no pressure. So I hope you give us a call and I'm going to say just a couple little things. Um, now don't, when I say this, think that, oh, well, he didn't say my thing. So I guess that's not important. I shouldn't call right now. Rockdale, Repsol, Cabot, call the office. 570-307-0702. Now others too, every one of them. But these are active leases. I've been doing a lot of negotiation with these companies recently, or in reviews, I should say reviews and consultations and some negotiation. And it just, I think that it's important that you call and you learn about the good and bad of these leases and what can maybe be changed or what can't be changed. So aside from them, any and all contracts, any and all issues, give me a call 570-307-0702, 570-307-0702. And always keep listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark, each and every week at this time on this station. We've got two more segments to go. I'll be right back. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Just want to remind everybody, you know, I'm talking about reviews and consultations here a lot this morning, but at the same time, don't get confused. I am still, you know, we're taking on the gas companies, got multiple litigation matters going right now. If you're getting, if you feel you're getting cheated on royalties, we want to hear from you, I'll look at it, see if we think there's any claims. And to my friends in Tioga County, Again, I promise you, we're, I, if I have one thing I can, if I can do one thing, I want to bust up these, these vertical wells with people shut in year after year after year after year. I am so, I can't tell you how much time I think about it. And I know you think about it probably more than me because you're living in it, but I, it, again, it's outrageous and we're going to, we are, we're communicating with companies. We have demand letters out and we're going to be, we've, well, we're filing cases and we're going to be filing cases. So if you are shut in for, now listen, I'm going to say this because the, it's a you know, double-edged sword. The longer you're shut in, the better potential you have for a claim. But unfortunately it means you're also shut in a long time, but I'm really looking for people for potential claims if you've been shut in for eight years or more and especially if you have at least a hundred acres of property and what we're looking for is you know i do these reviews um and these this let me tell you if you fit this criteria you've been shut in for eight years or more and you have a hundred acres or more and the more acres the better and unfortunately the longer you're shut in the better I really want to hear from you. And I do these reviews and consultations where I'll review it and see if I think you have a claim and there's no charge for that. So I want to look at those because I want to bust this up. This has me out of my mind and it's, this issue isn't going away. And so, you know, out there, Tioga companies, Doug Clark, I'm not going away either. I'm not. 
and we're bringing these claims and we're starting, we're going to be starting soon. Um, but we've been in engaged in discussions and you may be shut in and you, your lease may have terminated. And, our, and again, in my opinion, but I want to hear from you because this, I'm not going away from this issue. I promise you. And it's huge in Tioga County, enormous vertical wells shut in. Now, let me tell you too, more on this issue, the leases, which seem to have, now I don't want to, just because if you don't have this lease or this type of lease doesn't mean you don't have a potential claim, but I want to focus for a second. If you have a lease from around the early 2000s and you had a lease that terminated, what I find a lot of these are around 2010, it has a termination date. And what happened was the company drilled a vertical well, unitized the property and are now holding you based on this vertical well. So if this occurred around 2010, you're in year eight and potentially moving into year nine of shut in. And a lot of those older leases, leases that were signed between 2000 and 2005, don't have the same shut in languages language excuse me and shut in rights that these more modern leases do so those leases if you have a lease that you signed in 2000 2005 and you've been shut in for eight years and you or more and you have a hundred acres or more i really want to look at your situation and again there's no charge for this i I spend weekends doing this where I'll pull the lease. I'll look at your situation. I'll look at the drilling records. We'll look at the commencement and see, do we think you have a claim for lease termination? And if I think you do, then we'll talk about your options. And if you don't want to do anything, you don't have to. The worst thing that happens for me, the worst thing is I spent time trying to identify a lease that precludes this type of activity which if we're correct and we can identify it can benefit everybody. So I don't mind doing that. I don't mind doing it. I want to do it. I want to stop this. I, if you knew me, you'd know, I want to stop this because it's just not right. My old sixth grade teacher used to call me Douglas unfair banks because I would say that's unfair. I've never got rid of that. I still maintain that there's right and there's wrong. There's fair and there's unfair. And we, I don't go for unfair. And the greatest thing about being a lawyer is many times you can do something about it. So if I see something that's unfair and I see somebody taken advantage of and I see the little guy being taken advantage of and I see people like my parents, my grandparents, the people on the road that I grew up with and all the people I knew growing up being taken advantage of, I want to do something about it. And that is the awesome thing about this job is that many times I can, many times I can. And if I can't, I can at least explain to you why and what your situation is. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Make sure... You keep tuning in each and every week at this time for all things Marcellus and call the office 570-307-0702 and learn about our services. Now, circling back, I was talking about, I just want to finish this. I want to do something about the Tioga County situation where many people with hundreds of acres are being held by vertical wells and been held year after year after year and receiving shut in checks. I do again, if you have, if you're shut in eight years or more, have over a hundred acres, I do these reviews uh, without charge to see if we think you have a claim and I do my independent research and then I'll, we'll tell you whether we think you do or not. And then if you do, if we think you do, then you can decide, do you want to go forward with anything or not? It's okay. And the worst thing that happens for me is I get to review a lease and see if there's something that can be done about it. And if there isn't, hey, that's okay. But it was a chance that something could be done about it. And I want to do something about it because, again, it's wrong. And if I can change it, I want to change it. But I need help 
We need to get, we need to hear people, need to hear from people. We need to take action on this and we're going to do it. So I ran real far over in my first segment. So I'm going to cut this one a little short, but we got one more to go. But I do want to, before I cut this off, this segment, I want to remind everybody, you know, go to the websites at pagasleaseattorney.com and go to pipelineattorney.com. I have two websites, pagasleaseattorney.com, pipelineattorney.com. Today's radio show will be up and posted on the websites tomorrow. So you, if you can't listen to a whole show on a day, it's on at a bad time, you can't catch the show, you can. And too many people aren't taking advantage of this. You can go to the website and listen to the show anytime during the week. And not just this show, hours and hours and hours of prior shows on all different types of topics. Use the websites, the information on the websites as a resource. There's frequently asked questions, common mistakes that landowners make, royalty issues, leverage issues, negotiation, pipeline attorney. I've reviewed, consulted, negotiated with seven, over 70 different companies. 70 different companies. So if you're, you have a pipeline agreement, you're not going to pipelineattorney.com. Why? <laughs> Why? I promise you there are no fees and charges. Go and just read. Become educated. I want to hear from you, but if you never call, just go and get information. We can't let your sole source of information be the company and the company's representative. You, you just can't. From I can't give you near an, a, an accurate figure. But if you take what somebody was offered when I talked to them the first time to what they are ultimately signed for, it is comfortably in the last 10 plus years has to be well, well in the tens of millions of dollars. And again, virtually all the work I do is hourly. I don't have a percentage of these things. We want to help you we want to inform you. I do. So call and see if I can help. Call and learn about reviews and consultations. And listen, just because I talk about reviews and consultations, I do compressor station agreements, meter site agreements, surface use agreements, unitization issues, royalty, royalty lawsuit issues, buying, selling gas rights, estates, estate planning in uh, people with gas uh, interests. We want to make sure you're doing that right. People buying and selling property with oil and gas rights. And of course, any agreement related to uh, oil and natural gas. So give us a call, learn about the services, 570-307-0702, 570-307-0702. And join me each week for all things Marcellus at this time on this station and most and, and important too i hear there's really valuable commercial breaks here so make sure you pay attention to those too and i'll be right back welcome back to all things marcellus with me attorney doug clark of the clark law firm remember to join me each and every week at this time on this station for all things marcellus i have been doing this show since 2010 since 2010 so we're not quitting so keep tuning in and remember, go back to the websites, pagasleaseattorney.com, pipelineattorney.com. I have a short segment here, so I want to like kind of hit some hot issues, um, you know, things that I see and, you know, this is not going to be a lot of detail, but just some buzzwords, things I see. Number one, multi-unit well consent, a request from Cabot or Chesapeake now doing it too in the same forms. The cabot is if you have a multi-unit well consent request i suggest you call my office for a review and consultation i suggest you call my office for a review excuse me a review and consultation 570-307-0702 i really think you should do it Number two, if you have a lease offer in Tioga County, I have been doing a lot of reviews and consultations. 
I have been doing reviews and consultations with people in some areas that have offer, offers, excuse me, from both Repsol and Rockdale as an example. In those cases, we review those agreements, we dive into them, and we explain. I explain what the difference is, and we talk about which agreement may be better, what you might be able to do to improve each of the agreements, and what may be the best strategy and approach going forward, or what will be. So, and I just mentioned those two, Repsol and Rock, or excuse me, yeah, Repsol and Rockdale. But I don't care who it is, same thing, reviews and consultations. But that's been a hot issue lately. I've been doing a lot of lease reviews in Tioga County. Three, again, you're shut in in Tioga County or in that area for eight years or more and have over 100 acres. I want to hear from you. I'll do a review and see if I think you have a claim and a way to say, you know, a legitimate argument that your lease is expired. I do those. I want to hear from you. I want to stop that. So whether it's you, your neighbor, somebody you know, I am telling you, I want to stop that. I want to hear from you, but I'm looking for eight years or more shut in and then also 100 acres or more, a minimum 100 acres. Number four, amendments and ratifications. If you are asked to sign an amendment and ratification to any oil and gas lease pipeline agreement or any other document, put down the pen, please. Pick up the phone, 570-307-0702. These documents are incredibly powerful while not appearing to be so. Amendment ratification. Amendment, modification, ratification. Please put the pen down. Get information. Get information. Critical. It is critical. Amendments and ratifications. Want to hear from you. Pipeline agreements. Pipeline agreements. Do not fall into, this is what we're paying. This is what these guys signed. This is what that guy signed. I have done multiple, not saying yours will be. I have done several pipeline agreements at over a hundred dollars a foot. I I would put the average pipeline agreement that I do on average at over, well, certainly over thirty dollars a foot. So we need to make sure that you understand that leverage and you're maximizing it with these pipeline agreements. And listen, do not fall for the gas company guys were bad. We're the knights in shining armor. We're going to get your gas to market in these pipelines. So here, hurry up and sign, and we're going to do this as soon as possible. Don't fall into that because essentially it's like the double burn. They burn you by shutting you in forever not producing gas, and then they come after you're frustrated and burned and burn you again by getting you to sign a $10 or $15 pipeline right-of-way agreement, which is a joke, in my opinion. In my opinion. So, reviews and consultations, pipeline right-of-way agreements. We have to stop signing these bad agreements. We have to. And I'm telling you, a wonderful way to start is that review and consultation 570-307-0702. Now, I know I talked a lot about reviews and consultations, a little bit commercial today, but I, it's important. And I need to do these shows every once in a while to get people to call to make sure we're getting you this information. So I want to hear from you. So remember, everybody, stop signing bad agreements. The land man works for the company, not for you, the land owner. Put down the pen, pick up the phone, give me a call, see if we can help you. 570-307-0702 and have a great week, everyone.